Today I'd like to introduce a social meditation practice called Essence Noting. Essence Noting is inspired by a Tibetan practice called Mahamudra. Now my, my Buddhist training is all in Theravada Buddhism, so I have no formal training in Tibetan. And my uh, limited understanding of Mahamudra comes from reading about it. So I won't claim any authenticity here, but the in terms of uh, being an expert on Tibetan Mahamudra. But I think the idea is very accessible, and it's something that I find uh, wonderfully inspiring. One way to approach this is to look at the word itself, Mahamudra. Uh, this is um, a Sanskrit word, probably the same in Pali. A mudra is a gesture. So when you see Buddhist statues and he's doing something like the the earth witness mudra, where he's got one hand on the touching the earth and one hand in his lap, or some complex finger gesture, these are mudras. Maha means great, so as in great, large. Mahamudra then can be interpreted very literally as the great gesture. And what would the great gesture be? What are we talking about here? In this context, the great gesture would be an internal gesture, a mental gesture. It would be turning toward the essential nature of mind. An important concept here is the unmanifest. So the essential nature of mind is unmanifest. How are we to interpret that? We should interpret that very rigorously. The unmanifest is not manifest. It would be tempting, it would be seductive to imagine, well, if I get really subtle and look very carefully, then I'll be able to see the unmanifest. But then that would be manifest, however subtle. So let's say that we're taking this very literally. Now, we have support for this literal interpretation from the third Karmapa in his famous Mahamudra prayer, where he writes, It cannot be said to exist, because even the world-honored one doesn't see it. In this tradition, the world-honored one is the Buddha, and sometimes that can be the world-honored ones. There are many Buddhas in Tibetan tradition. But if the Buddhas don't see this, you're not going to see it. So the unmanifest is something we will never, ever see. And yet we're saying the great gesture is to turn toward the unmanifest. This turns out to be really good. There's no way to mess up the unmanifest. Cannot be said to exist because even the world honored one doesn't see it. The second line of that pair is it cannot be said to be non existent because nirvana and samsara arise from it. Well, I would say the second part of that is speculative, and the first part of that is just a statement of observable and logical fact. You're not going to see it. But we're going to turn towards something we know we won't see. Now, when I do that, if I incline my mind toward whatever I imagine the unmanifest is, 
one thing I can be sure of is that whatever I do see, whatever I do perceive, isn't it. So this is open-ended. This is it doesn't resolve and it keeps me doing the gesture. So the activity of the gesture itself is the practice. With essence noting, we're going to make this concrete. So we're, we're playing a game, riffing on this theme. With essence noting, the first thing you do is you listen for ships in a distant harbor. So here in Asheville, we're sure that we won't hear those ships. Whatever I hear isn't those ships. It must be something else. Maybe it's a sound that isn't those ships. And maybe it's something that I'm constructing in my mind. But it's definitely not the ships. So here we have it again. We're turning towards something that we know going in we won't see. And anything we do see or hear won't be what we're turning toward. Listening. The primary object here is listening, and the note is listening. So you can sub-vocalize or say aloud listening, both to remind yourself to do it because this is the primary object and also to note that you are doing it when that happens. Listening. When I do this, something that comes up right away is ghostly images of ships in a distant harbor or on the high seas maybe some phantom sounds of clanking ship rigging listening and the remembering that oh that's but that's not the distant that's not the sound of the distant ships that's a mental construct so i can just do it again listening And what I find is that the, the mind becomes very receptive. You have to be very open-minded to listen for something that you'll never hear. Listening. The second of the three part the three part instruction here is to notice and to note any positive mind states that come up so for example i have a, i'm having a pleasant feeling of expansiveness my mind gets very big and open to listen so i say expansiveness listening interest, listening, listening, engagement, listening, enjoyment, listening the third and final of the three-part instruction is if anything unwelcome comes up at all it's always dealt with in the same way and that's to you if you feel it and you say release listening release expansiveness, excitement, nostalgia, listening, 
listening, peacefulness, release. listening. So what we're doing here by just uh, <coughs> releasing anything unwelcome and by noting and therefore reinforcing the positive mind states, we're shamelessly cultivating positive, pleasant emotions. So this is uh, meditation track A. We're, we're trying to put ourselves in a state. We know what we're doing. Now, there may very well be some deep insight to be had here from engaging this idea of listening for the unmanifest, and that would be lovely as well. Uh, but whatever you do, don't hesitate to enjoy this, because this is an enjoyable thing by design. Okay, to review, your primary object is listening. When you don't know what else to say, the correct answer is listening. Positive mind state comes up, name it. And if anything unwelcome at all happens, say release. Release. 